forward to that, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Hello from Jonathan and me. Welcome to the programme. First tonight. Nearly half the schools in our region are not good enough. That's according to the school's watchdog, Ofsted. So far this academic year, 595 have been inspected. 54% of those were considered outstanding or good, but 46% were below the desired standard rating, either satisfactory or inadequate. Well, one of the government's plans for improving those figures is the creation of more academies. These are funded directly from the government, giving them greater independence. David Hughes has been looking at the pros and cons of academy schools. I'll make a complete circuit. Look on your diagram. Science with the Year 7s. Traditional lessons in an Essex school. But this is far from a traditional school. They're dancing to a different tune as one of the handful of academy schools in the east of England. And the government wants more. As well as a dance GCSE, Clacton Coastal Academy also specialises in digital media. The academy opened last autumn. It replaced two schools in the Essex seaside town, one of which Ofsted had put on special measures. It's loads better since like, we've come to the academy. I feel that it's changed massively with like the morale of the school. Opportunities to say what we want, what we don't want, what we want to change. The students behave a lot better because I think it's because of the uniform. It makes us feel a lot smarter. It makes me feel proud of school. Of the hundreds of schools across the Anglia region, only two dozen had academy status at the start of the year. Essex has nine, with two each in Norfolk, Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire. There are three in Bedfordshire, five in Northamptonshire and one in Milton Keynes. Academies like Clacton get their funding direct from the government rather than the local council. It means more cash for the school. What comes with being an academy is that additional resource, the additional expertise, being part of a family of academies um, helps to achieve that perhaps wasn't possible before. While some local authorities have welcomed aspects of the academy scheme, there are still worries. One thing I think we are, many of us are concerned in local education authorities, is about what happens to those schools which are left. I mean, in this county in particular, we're getting proposals coming forward for free schools which are actually to do with locational issues rather than achievement issues. It's not just existing schools like here at Clacton Coastal Academy that are being encouraged to strike out on their own as independent state schools. The government wants to expand the whole idea. So other groups, charities, religious organisations, industry, business, educational establishments and even parents could set up their own schools. The town of Clare, nestling in the Stour Valley on the Suffolk-Essex border. Here the community want to set up their own secondary school, so children don't have to travel to neighbouring Sudbury or Haverhill. They even have a building earmarked, the town's middle school, which is due for closure. There is no local education. The children are being asked to go to school. Well, they're, they're being uh, told which school they're going to go to, so there's no choice, no diversity. This is the school that you go to. The bus goes by the end of your, your, um, your road. You have to catch that. Excellent. Good girls. Of course, the changes do have fierce critics. The removing of resources from existing schools, the destabilising of the provision for a hugely greater number of parents and pupils. All sides are awaiting more detail of how the government plans to deal with these issues. David Hughes, Anglia News, Clacton. Well, our political correspondent, Matthew Hudson, has been at Westminster today. We spoke to him a little while ago, and I started by asking him to what extent the three main parties were in agreement over academies. Well, in broad terms, they are agreed, but there are certainly those amongst the Liberal Democrats who are ambivalent about the project, to say the least. Amongst those, I know that uh, Bob Russell from Colchester is really not keen on the idea at all. And, of course, although this was orig originally the brainchild of Tony Blair. It was only earlier this month that 47 Labour MPs, including Kelvin Hopkins from Luton North, signed an early day motion saying that they really think it is an appalling idea that is not the road that we should go down and calling upon the government to stop. And Matt, talking of roads, on a different tack now, what news of road improvements to the A14? Well, Jonathan, I mean, you know it's been mooted over the last few weeks that this was a project that uh, could be one of the victims of the cuts and that has happened today. Danny Alexander, the first secretary to the Treasury, announcing that it's part of eight billion pounds in spending which is being suspended for now at least. The project was due to cost 1.1 billion pounds and aimed to cut the appalling congestion that we see on the road between Cambridge and west of Huntingdon just about every day of the week. Now it's simply not going to happen for 
who knows how many years we're all going to have to get used to sitting in queues on the A14 for a lot longer now. It's also probably worth mentioning that another one of those schemes to be suspended was a four and a half billion pound scheme to provide new air sea rescue helicopters to patrol our coasts. Matt Hudson there and there's more on the future of academies and the decision to cancel work on the A14 along with the rest of our region's political news tonight at 11.35 on Anglia Late Edition. People in a Cambridgeshire village say they still have grave concerns following a meeting about the clean-up of a former chemical factory. Well, last night, villagers from Hawkston met with the council and the Environment and Health Protection Agencies to discuss their concerns over the site. But many are still worried. Well, Emma Baker joins us now from the village. Emma, villagers say this is really affecting their quality of life. Absolutely, Becky, yes. This is something that's got people here in Hawkston up in arms. The clean-up operation on the site, about a quarter of a mile in that direction, began back in March. And since then, villagers say they have become quite literally sick of it. They're complaining of streaming eyes, sore throats and headaches, not to mention the occasional wafting of a strong chemical odour over the village. Well, the local council, the uh, Health Protection Agency and the Environment Agency all say they are confident that this work is safe. But as for the villagers behind me, well, they say they want change and fast. Peter Elliott has been growing asparagus in Hawkston for 25 years. But for the first time in his farming career, he won't be harvesting this field. Since excavation work began at an old chemical factory site, he doesn't feel confident this crop is safe to eat. And it's costing him dear. Many thousands. Many thousands. Almost a livelihood. Um, of my wife, daughter. We don't actually know what we're going to do this the rest of the year. We've got nothing else. It's our only crop. The Food Protection Agency have said, wash the asparagus, because it's all washed, but they won't wash everything off. It's not just Chris's business that's suffering. People around the village have been complaining about a strong smell, saying it's affecting their health. Last night, they had a meeting with the relevant authorities who insist the work is safe, but locals say their concerns weren't properly addressed. The remediation strategy is, is not adequate to control the odours. So I think there has to be a change in the remediation strategy to, re to reduce this. I think at the present time, the levels of smell, odour that people are exposed to are quite completely unacceptable. The site's being cleared up ahead of plans to build 380 new homes here. Now, the actual clear-up operation began just a few weeks ago, but it'll take another 18 months to complete. Chemicals have been produced on the site since the 1940s. Many, like the one designed by a German scientist who made nerve gas in the Second World War, are now illegal. The company that manages the site, Harrow Estates, says it's carrying out substantial monitoring and all the information's been checked by both the Environment Agency and the Health Protection Agency. They have assessed that information and they have indicated that it is very unlikely that there will be any short or long term health issues arising from the remediation. The level is that enough, very unlikely, sorry to interrupt, but is that enough to say very unlikely that there's not going to be any long term effect to, to the health? I mean, would you be happy living there if it was just very unlikely? They can't be certain, can they? I have absolute confidence in my technical team, in the technical team that are working on behalf of Harrow. South Cambridgeshire District Council are reviewing the information, the Environment Agency are reviewing the information, and some of the best toxicologists in the Health Protection Agency are reviewing the information. I would be happy, yes. The Health Protection Agency says it's receiving new data on a daily basis and will continue to monitor the situation closely. But the people who have to live there say they want a whole new approach to a problem that's making their lives a misery. Emma Baker, Anglia News, Hawkston. Difficult times in Hawkston there now. The